What do we pray 17 times a day? We pray, Ihdina Sirat al Mustaqim. Guide me to the straight path. And if I tell you, imagine you, you are guided on that path. You and I are guided on that path. Allah says, don't be overconfident. Shaitan is on that path. So if you want to be a muttaqin, simple, when an evil thought comes to you, you remember Allah. The only difference is you are getting personal in Surah Nas. Why? Because you are now asking it for your own self. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Alhamdulillah, wa salatu wa salamu ala Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam wa ala alihi wa ashabihi ajma'in amma ba'd fa'udhu billahi min ash-shaytani rajim bismillahi rahmani rahim qul a'udhu bi rabbin nas malikin nas ilahin nas min sharul waswas al-khannas alladhi yuswisu fi sudur nas min al-jinnati wal nas Before we get into the tafsir of the surah, insha'Allah, we would do the tajweed um, as usual, insha'Allah. And of those who have just come for the first time, uh, we've broken our class, our Quran program into two divisions. One is the tajweed of the Quran, reciting and the pronunciation of the, uh, of the correct makhraj with the rules. So we finished the makhraj. We still haven't gotten to the rules and insha'Allah next week, we would get into the rules of the Quran. However, we would run through uh, each letter that is in this surah so that we, we have a clear understanding of how to pronounce, uh, pronounce uh, each letter of the Quran. <clears throat> and also, I'll, I'll, I'll add a few points that we generally make mistakes uh, while, while reciting certain words of the Quran, right? As Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran, whenever you want to read the Quran or recite the Quran, seek refuge from Allah subhanahu, seek refuge in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So it's wajib, it's compulsory to say A'udhu Billahi min shaytan rajim before we read the Quran. With that, <coughs> the first word of the Quran for this, of this surah is Qaf. It's not a throat letter we've done. There are six letters that come from the throat. This is the deepest part of the tongue. Qaf, right? There are two uh, Kaf, uh, the word Qa and Ka in Arabic. One is this Qaf and the other is this Kaf, right? There is a huge difference between these two. Generally, we make a mistake with this qaf, when we say as kha, kha, we have the tendency of scratching our throat. It is not kha, it is not khul, it is qaf, qul, qaf, qul, right? Because this word comes 26 times in the Quran. So it's very important that we pronounce uh, the letter qaf in the most correct way. Qul. <clears throat> there is a, the second one, it has a hamza that is alif, a. And then followed by Ain. This is pretty tricky here. You start with A'u. You start with Alif. And then you, you, you need to stress your throat. So it's A'udhu. Dha. This Za generally we say it is A'udhu. It is not Za as in Zaid. But this is the Dha that you need to hold your tongue with your teeth. And then pronounce Za. If you hold your tongue with your teeth, this is the exact pronunciation that will come out. Because in Arabic, there is za, dha, and dha. All three are different, right? However, there is no dha in this surah, but there is dha. Hold your tongue with your teeth. The best practice that we do in our hips class is you take your finger and you put it right on your lips. It should, your finger should be wet with your, teeth, uh, with your tongue. That's the right pronunciation of this letter dha. Dha. Be, this in Arabic you don't roll the ra as in English. In Arabic it is not ra, but it is ra, ra. 
you take your tongue on the upper palate and you bend it upwards towards the end and you say ra right that's the right pronunciation of the word ra it is not ra it is if if anybody rolls the ra it is wrong it is ar rahman nir rahim and not ar rahman nir rahim rabbika rabbil bi rabbik bi rabbin nas this is a letter that comes out from your nose you got to take it in your nose qul a'udhu bi rabbin you got the vibrations should you should feel the vibrations in your nose that's the right pronunciation of the word nas here if you can feel the vibrations in your nose it's right absolutely right so let's take the first ayat qul a'udhu bi rabbin nas you can stretch this because there's an alif here right and then malikin nas the same thing this is pretty simple ilahin nas you can stress this min again you can take it in your nose min sharril waswas this is the sa and not the tha sa waswasil khannas this is the kha and there's a huge difference between this kha and this ta right a lot of us start with khul auzu bi rabbin nas if anybody says khul it is completely wrong you're changing the meaning and there are, like i said in the beginning of our tajweed class there are two mistakes that we do in our recitation one is the mistakes of a makhraj and the yes, the second is the mistakes of the qaida qaida is rules to a certain extent mistakes in the qaida is fine acceptable but except, uh, ru- mistakes in the makhraj is unacceptable and it is a major sin it's a major sin it's a guna on you it's a sin on you so always make sure that you get your makhraj right and then follow up with the with the qaida khannas <clears throat> Alladhi, this is the same the right here holding your tongue. Alladhi, yuwas, we sufi. This is not san. See, this sa and sa is different. This comes with a puff on your on your cheeks. Sudur, su, sudur in nas. And this is yuwas, we su, sa. And this is sa. The sa is very, very important because it comes in Surah Fatiha, right? Ihdinas, it is not siratal. All of us make a mistake. Siratal, it is not si- it is not the seen, but it is the seen. Siratal. Fi sudur in nas min al jinnati wa nas. This surah has six ayats, and let's inshallah go verse by verse. Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. Qul a'udhu bi Rabbin nas. You can in fact follow it up with me because every letter gives you 10 sawabs. So there's no embarrassment of you not reading the Quran, right? If you finish this surah, probably there are something like 700 or 800 rewards for you. So that's rewards in the taking. So don't miss those rewards, inshallah. Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. It's qaf. Make sure you don't remove the sound as kha. It is qul a'udhu bi rabbin nas. Malikin Nas Ilahin Nas Min Sharril Waswasil Khannas Alladhi Waswisu Fi Sudurin Nas من الجنة والناس So this is the Tajweed inshallah next Sunday we will get into the rules there are about eight rules so inshallah we'll try finishing one rule in every Sunday so that inshallah in eight to ten Sundays we should wrap up with Tajweed and then let's we'll get into inshallah the grammar of the Quran inshallah Any questions on Tajweed on any recitation? We have exact we have three minutes to start the tafsir, inshallah. Any questions? Brothers and sisters, we can take it up. If you haven't memorized this surah, memorize it because this is one of the most important surahs in the Quran. As Allah's Messenger says, the two best surahs that we reveal together 
are these. Qul a'uzu bi rabbil falaq and qul a'uzu bi rabbil nas. So it's very, very important that we know uh, the memorization of the surah. Naam. Inshallah, let's get into the tafsir of the surah. أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم إن الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا من يحده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا حادي له وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله أما بعد we ask Allah subhanahu we praise Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's forgiveness and, and we beg for his assistance. And we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to protect us from the evil of our own selves and from the evil of our wrongdoings. Especially when we understand this surah, the evil that this surah has and what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is trying to convey the message to us. It's so fascinating to know that this is the surah, subhanAllah. Again, I repeat my words. This is the surah, brothers and sisters. It has the root of all evil. It has the root of all problems in our lives. And that's why it is so important that we deal with this surah very carefully and very attentively so that we understand the message of this surah that we can take back home and implement the, the, the action plans that Allah's Messenger and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala have given in this surah and in the Quran insha'Allah. <coughs> With that, just I'd like to repeat this surah again. Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. Qul a'udhu bi Rabbin Nas. Say, I seek refuge in Allah, in the Lord of the mankind. Malikin Nas, the owner of the mankind, the king, rather the king of the mankind. Ilahin Nas, the God of the mankind. God, however, is a very small uh, translation. Inshallah, when we get into tafsir and know the meaning of Ilah, the literal meaning of Ilah, we'll understand the word Ilah better. Min sharul waswas al khannas from the shar from the evil of the whisperer who whispers and then withdraws. Alladhi yaswisu fi sudur nas who whispers in the hearts, in the breast, in the chest of men of mankind. Min al jinnati wan nas and from among the jinn and mankind. However, whenever in this surah we talk about man. It's not the literal translation of man because this, the word nas is mentioned here. Nas is both inclusive of man and inclusive of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions in, in, all, uh, in the entire surah the word nas. So any translation that says we seek refuge in Allah from man or man, only man, then the translation needs to be corrected because it is mankind. Like usual, inshallah, we'll, we'll break our tafsir into many, many headings. For the first, the, the introduction of this surah. We dealt, I, I, I told you, inshallah, last, uh, I told you in my last class about Qul A'uzubra bil Falaq. If you have missed Surah Falaq and you're sitting here for Surah Nas, I'm telling you this tafsir is incomplete. And if you sit, if you've attended Surah Falaq and not Nas, this tafsir is still incomplete. Because these two surahs were revealed at one time for one reason and it has 11 complete surahs, 11 complete ayats. However, we've already done with Surah Falaq. If you want to uh, yani, uh, make sure you get that, it's already posted on, on hikmainstitute.com. So you can actually have a look uh, and go in the tafsir of the surah. I did uh, in the introduction of, this, of Surah Falaq that Allah's Messenger وسلم, gave a name to these two surahs. Who can rec recollect and recall the name that Allah's Messenger gave to this surah? Subhanallah. Mu'awwadatayn, right? Mu'awwadatayn. The meaning of this is the two surahs that seek refuge, right? And it's narrated by Imam, uh, it's collected by Imam Zahabi in his tafsir, the introduction that Allah's Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa used this word for both the surahs, surah Falaq and surah Nas. The second heading is the name of the surah. 
Like Surah Falaq, this also takes the name from the first ayah, the last word of the first ayah, Nas. Nas means mankind. Nas, however, has many, many meanings to it in the Arabic form. Inshallah, one or two meanings we will deal in our tafsir to understand, this tafs to understand how shaitan has an influence in our, uh, in our life. The number of ayats. There are six ayats in this surah. Right? We dealt, there are five ayats in Surah Falaq and six ayats in Surah Nas. And the, why five and six? Because there were 11 knots tied to the, to the, uh, to the spell that was cast on, casted on, the, on Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. The position of the surah, there is no difference of opinion that this surah is the last surah in the order of compilation in the Quran. Whichever wherever, whichever country you're sitting in and whichever Mus'haf you open, be it an Uthmani or a Madani or any other uh, Mus'haf, you will find that this Surah is the last Surah of the entire Quran. And SubhanAllah, it has a beautiful link between Surah Falaq and between Surah, uh, surah Nas and Surah Fatiha. And this is what uh, we really need to understand, the, the similarities between Surah Falaq, Surah Nas and Surah Fatiha, inshaAllah. The place of revelation. The place of revelation is very clear as discussed in Surah Falaq that the place of revelation is Madina al munawwara And there is no op difference of opinion on that because of the fact that Prophet ﷺ was bewitched, was the spell on the Prophet ﷺ was cast on uh, during his life in Madina al munawwara and not during Makkah. And this is where the Surah was revealed. Now the reason for revelation is in the book of medicine, in Sahih al-Bukhari, the Prophet ﷺ has narrated through the, through the beautiful mouth of Aisha an, who asked Allah's Messenger ﷺ what had, what had really happened. And he said to Aisha an, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala answered my request that I asked Allah, I asked Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala what had happened and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent my reply. And it's narrated by Aisha radiallahu an, First of all, what had really happened to the Messenger of Allah? There was a spell, there was a magic spell that was cast on upon the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam where it had reached the peak and it's narrated by Sufyan that this kind of magic that was done on the Messenger of Allah was, was the highest magic. And what had happened? That Allah's Messenger didn't realize that whenever he thought he had a relationship with his wife, but he actually didn't. And this was the highest form of magic that he had ha it had happened. We already dealt in Surah Falaq that why in particular Allah's Messenger was chosen and not any companion, right? Why the best of the creation was chosen. And it was narrated, it's narrated by Aisha radiallahu an that the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa said that there were two angels that had come down, one who was sat next to Allah's Messenger's head and the other who sat and the feet of Allah's Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and they spoke. What did they speak? One asked the other angel, what has happened to Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam? And the other, the other uh, angel replied that he has been bewitched. And the, other, uh, and the first angel asked him, how has he been bewitched? He says, by the comb and the hair of Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And then who has been, who bewitched him? Whose name is that? Labid, Labid ibn Asam, right? Who was a Jew, a hypocrite, and he bewitched him. And Allah's Messenger, through this dream, the angel said, Where is the hair and where is the comb of Rasulullah? And then he replied that it is the, in a well under a rock. Uh, the well's name was Dahrwan, it was under a rock. And then it was Allah's Messenger who sent some of his companions in one narration it is Ali ibn Abi Talib radiallahu an another narration it is some of the sahaba however that's not the that's not the criteria it, the sahabas went and Allah's messenger ordered them to recite these 11 verses upon each knot that had been tied on his hair and this is how they re, they removed the spell on prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam however be, based on this event that happened in the life Upon the life of Prophet Muhammad, there are so many views that are of, of kufr. There are so many views that shaitan had an effect on the verses, on the revelation of Prophet Muhammad sallallahu However, if anybody, if anybody has to believe that this is true, then he lands up in the state of kufr because the revelation is from Allah and Allah alone. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran, says in the Quran that, uh, 
that it is it, the revelation is only from Allah and had it been from anyone else you would have found mistakes and contradictions and this is a challenge that Allah throws in the Quran in Surah Nisa Surah number 4 and Ayah number 82 its connection with the previous Surah There's a beautiful link between Surah Falaq and Surah Nas. Surah Falaq's main focus was Hasad, right? Was, was the envy that we have within ourselves. And if you look at Hasad, it is not the root of the problem. It is not the root of all evil. It is not the root of the evil it has. It's just a cause. You know, when you say, وَمِن شَرِّ حَاسِدٍ إِذَا Hasad," I seek refuge in Allah against the evil who casts his who, who casts his jealousy upon us, right? His evil eye. But that's not the root of the problem. The root of the problem is jealousy, is hatred. And who puts that in? And that's the shaytan. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in this surah talks about the root of the problem. And that is waswasa. The shaytan incites enmity between two people, right? Between two brothers. And that is the root. The waswasa is the root of all problems. And like I said in my beginning of the talk, that this surah deals with the evil, with the root of all evil, the root of all evil, and that is the waswasa, right? That is the whisperings of the shaitan. The second connection that these two, uh, the link uh, between these two surahs is surah falaq is an outwardly problem, right? We dealt with what? We dealt with falaq, uh, we dealt with ha uh, magic, hasad, Right? All these things are outwardly problem, affecting our life. But this surah in particular, in surah Nas, affects our iman within. Why? Because shaitan is ever sitting next to us or literally on us, putting his waswasa in the path of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Whenever you get a good thought of walking up to the masjid or going to the masjid, shaitan is always sitting at you, putting his waswasas in. Right? Diverting you from the remembrance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And this is the most dangerous problem that we, can, we face. Surah Falaq is an outwardly problem. Doesn't last for long. Right? How long does a magic last upon you? One way, one day, one week, a month, and then alhamdulillah you're cured somehow or the other. But Surah Nas, Allah's Messenger says in a hadith in Sahih Muslim, that's, that shaitan is at you <clears throat> from the time you are born until your last breath. Allahu Akbar. And we will deal with that in our tafsir. How shaitan comes to you at your last moment and he's there. Even then, he's trying to convince you that Islam is not the right religion. Surah Falaq deals with problems that are not in your control. Right? And Surah Nas deals with problems that are within your control. Waswasa is a problem that you have within, right? You're sitting there, you know 8.30 is Isha, but you know 8.30 there's a match. What do you do? You sit and switch on the TV and you watch the match. That's, you, nobody can say that that's out of my control. Things that are within your control, right? That's your waswasa. Surah Nas is within your control. Surah Falaq is not in your control. You don't even know who has done magic on you. Right? Allah's Messenger only knew because Allah's message, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent the angels. Or else he never knew who had done and what he, they had done to Allah's Messenger. So he had no control over the magic. Even Allah's Messenger didn't have control. Subhanallah. So imagine you and I. Right? Surah Nas deals with problems within us. And the problems that are within us are the most dangerous because Surah Falaq doesn't damage your Iman. People might be hasad of you, not for your Iman, right? There's probably 1% that will be hasad on you for your Iman. People are 99% hasad on what? On your wealth, on your status, on the business that you have, on your cars that you drive. All these are worldly things. The problem with Surah Nas is it, it damages your Iman. Falaq doesn't damage your Iman. It damages the Iman of the person who does the Hasad. But the one affecting, getting affected with the Hasad doesn't damage his Iman. It only damages his worldly things. But Surah Nas damages your Iman within. And the worst of your Iman. 
That's the whole problem. Right? From we'll, we'll understand why the word waswasa is used in the in this ayat. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala could have used other words, but he chose waswasa. Right? When we when you understand the three different words used in the Quran for evil whispering, waswasa. Uh, the other one is Nazagha and the other one is Hamazat. When all three are used in the Quran, but Allah chose to use Waswasa here, so we understand how beautiful Allah has picked up this word Waswasa. <coughs> Surah Falak starts with asking Allah once. Right? The word Rabb, Qul A'uzu bi Rabbil Falak. You start with the word Rabb and then you come with all the problems. But in Surah Nas, you go from Rabb to Malik and from Ilah. From, from Rabb, from your Lord, you go to the King and then you go to the one you worship. And then you ask your problems. Meaning, who is more desperate? You are more desperate in Surah Nas and not in Surah Falak. Right? In Surah Falaq, you only asked Allah once, قُلْ أَعُوذُ بِرَبِّ الْفَلَقِ Oh Allah, I seek, re I seek refuge in you from the, de from the daybreak. But in Surah Nas, it is like literally, you are asking Allah, قُلْ أَعُوذُ بِرَبِّ nas. I first asked Allah, and then, I, I assume, I assume, I assume that I need to be more desperate. I get down on my knees and say, مَلِكِ nas. Right? Then again, I assume that I need to get more desperate. I get even more closer to Allah by saying Ilahin Nas. This is how desperate we get in Surah Nas. Why? Because it is the root of all evil. The root of all evil lies in the ayah number four. Literally, you're asking Allah, you're pleading Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in this surah. You first start with Rabban Nas. Then you go to Malikin Nas and then you literally lie down on the ground and say Ilahin Nas. Why? Because Ilah is the one you, you, you turn all your desires to. You turn all your desires to. Next. <clears throat> the virtues of the Surah. However, the virtues of this surah and the, verse, the surah before this surah Falaq, they are clubbed together. And we finished the virtues of surah Falaq in, in surah, uh, while we dealt with surah Falaq. However, I would just run through the headings, right? Just run through the headings to save time. The first is these two surahs put together is a cure for every evil eye and every magic done upon you. Second is it's a cure for hasad. Hasad is jealousy. I won't, I won't narrate the hadith because we've already finished the hadith in Surah Falaq. The third is Allah's Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said in this hadith that the best two surahs revealed together are these two. So in the entire Quran, in the entire Quran, if Surah Fatiha is the best single surah, these two are the best combined surahs in the entire Quran. Subhanallah. Next, <clears throat> the best form of seeking refuge. All of us love to wear ta'weez, right? We probably wear rings that we've, give, we've got from some peer or some dargha or some grave or some mazar. Why? Because it increases our life. It increases our, it, it cures us from sickness, all that stuff. Brothers and sisters, that is all shirk. There is all shirk. As Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran, in Surah Yusuf, Surah number 12, Ayah number 106. There are so many who believe, yet they commit shirk. So many who believe, yet commit shirk. And, and there's a hadith uh, which is narrated by Imam Ahmad in his Musnad that Allah's Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa said, man allaqa, man, allaqa, uh, man allaqa tamimatan faqad ashraka. And whoever hangs a ta'weez has committed shirk. Right? Whoever hangs a ta'weez has committed shirk. And this surah is an answer to your protection. We Muslims are so weak, we people are so weak that we always depend upon something to protect us. Right? We always depend upon something. For example, if you have a problem, if your child is suffering from some sickness, somebody has to just tell you, 
200 kilometers away, there's a place, there's a person giving, sitting there with a broomstick and he will cure you. I'm telling you, the next minute, you're off to that place. Why? Because we are so weak. We fail to put our trust in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We fail to put our trust in Allah. Why? Because it is our child. That's the problem. When Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has remedies for this problem in the Quran, in Surah Falaq and Surah Nas, we don't believe, we don't put our trust in these surahs. And that's what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says. And in the surah, in the tafsir of the surah, we will deal with an ayat where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives permission. Listen to my words. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives permission to shaitan to control our hearts. And he cannot control only when you do two things. Let's see what those are. So the best form of seeking refuge e are these two surahs. And you also dealt that this surah protects you from evil eye. Right? Hasad, we, we know that nazar is there. And we should believe in nazar. But however, putting a black mark on your face or a black kajal or whatever is all forms of shirk. Believing in Surah Falaq and Surah Nas is the only way out. One more thing that we didn't mention in Surah Falaq because this Surah Falaq doesn't have this because this Surah has it. It's the protection from the root of all evil. Like I mentioned to you, the following verse, verse number four has the root of all evil. When you pray Surah, Surah, Surah Nas during the day, in the mornings or evenings or night or whenever possible, you are actually protecting, you're asking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to protect you from the root of all evil. And this is one of the virtues of the Quran, of the surah. Some of the benefits and action plans we can take from the surah is following up with surah falaq again. Allah's messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sunnah was to recite the surah after every wajib salah, after every far salah. Fajr, Dhuhar, Asr, Maghrib, Isha. Uh, and Fajr and Maghrib, he used to pray these three surahs three, three times. Surah Ikhlas, Surah Falaq, and Surah Nas. 112, 113, and 114. Three times each. And Dhuhar, Asr, and Isha, he used to pray it once. And then it was a habit of Allah's Messenger, whenever he would get up, retrieve in the morning, he would pray these three surahs once or three times. Whenever he would go to bed, he would pray these three, three, three surahs three times each. And another narration, when, while, when he was sick, he used to blow in his hand the three surahs and wipe on his body wherever, wherever he could reach. So this is something really important that we should implement in our lives. Do not forget to pray these three, three surahs after your first salahs. Coming to the tafsir of this surah, right? Let's move to ayah number one. I'll run through the word meaning and then we'll get into the tafsir, inshallah. The first is Qul. Qul in Arabic means say. It's a command from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. A'udhu has two, me two parts to it. One is the alif and one is the udhu. The alif is I because it's a verb. I am doing this act and udhu is seeking protection from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Birabbi, B is in and Rabb is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the Rabb. And Nas is mankind. So this is the word meanings for this first ayat. Now let's move to the tafsir of this first ayat. Qul, Qul means say. Say is a command here in, Allah, in this ayat. Why does Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala ask us to say, say Qul? Allah could have easily started the verse or surah with A'udhu bi Rabbin Nas right? I seek refuge in Nas why, 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 why did Allah add the word Qul? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala adds the word Qul for us to realize that even before we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala we pronounce it with our tongues to make, us, to make our own selves realize that we cannot be arrogant we need to be humble before Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and that know that we are weak when you say the word Qul in this ayat, you are telling yourself that Ya Allah, I am weak, you are strong, I need help. That's it. I am weak. 
And when you say, Qul a'udhu bi rabbin nas, you are literally trying to say that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that I'm at the verge of begging here. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala goes on from begging even, even more when he says, Malikin nas, ilahin nas. Literally, you're not leaving Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in this surah. You are making sure that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala listens to you by calling out three times, three consecutive times with three different qualities of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The first, Rabb, the second, Malik, and the third is Ilah. Right? Rabb is the connection that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala builds between us, between Him and, me, and us. And this is what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran, right? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, even, even before He used the word Allah, what did Allah do? Allah made a connection between Allah and us through the word Rabb. The first ayah to be revealed in the Quran was Surah Alaq. Iqra bismi rabbika alladhi. Bismi rabb. Read in the name of your Lord. Read in the name of your Rabb. Allah didn't use Allah here. Allah used the word Rabb to join a connection between Allah and us. That we are His slaves. And we need protection. We need guidance. We need protection every single time. And by using, using the word Rabb here, Allah signifies a lot of things. A lot of things. First of all, Rabb signifies ownership. Rabb signifies ownership. And Rabb signifies that He is our master and the controller. Allah controls our life. Rabb also signifies that Allah is the one who gives many favors. Right? Imagine. Today, Alhamdulillah, we are Muslims. There are so many non-Muslims committing shirk. Yet, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is blessing them with blessings after blessings in this life. Right? We all know what will happen to them in the hereafter. But yet, Allah is being so kind that even though he commits shirk, the gravest of shin, sins, Allah still has left him in this world. He hasn't taken him to account. Right? This is the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is the favors that Allah blesses upon mankind. And the word Rabb also signifies something to do with power. That Allah has the power. And Allah is the Rabb that He has the power over us. And the word Rabb also signifies to ensure stability that He gives to us in, this form, in the form that we are. Rabb also signifies authority. Rabb signifies guidance. Rabb signifies who gives a lot to his slaves. And that's why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in Surah Fatiha, immediately after appraising himself, what does Allah say? Alhamdulillah, Rabbil Alameen. Allah starts with Rabbil Alameen, but here you start with Rabbil Nas. There you get that Allah is the Rabb of the Alameen. But here you're getting personal. You're really getting personal because you need help from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You say Rabbil Nas, he's my Lord. He's my king, he's my ilah. <clears throat> if you look at the word Rabb, subhanAllah, just the word Rabb and the relationship it has with us, with human beings, it, it summarizes the entire Quran, the message of the Quran in one sentence. The entire message of the Quran is summarized in one sentence, subhanAllah. How? That Allah is our Rabb and we are His slaves. And that slaves need to be guided, need to be told, need to be instructed what we need to do. And this is the book that has full of instructions. If you want to be benefited, if you want to be a good slave, you take the instructions. The bottom line, the entire Quran is summarized between the slave and the master relationship. Subhanallah. That Allah is our Rabb and we are His slave. And to be guided and to be instructed, we need to take his guidance. That is the kitab, that is the Quran. Now we come to ayah number two. The word Malik or Malik is from the root, same root. Malik is king, Malik is, uh, sorry, Malik is owner, Malik is king. However, only the, only the stretching mark in Surah Fatiha makes it Malik as the owner, but Malik, Malikin Nas as the king of the Nas. So the word meaning is Malik is king and Nas is people again. There's no real tafsir into this surah, into this ayat. So let's move into ayah number three. The word ilah, right? The word Allah comes from the word ilah. When you say ilah, ilah in Arabic 
means you turn your intentions to you turn all your worship to to somebody that you worship turning your all your desires of worship is known as ilah turning into ilah right and when you see, when you add an al to ilah making that object of worship specific it becomes allah right so here you're actually telling ilah nas that o oh allah you are my lord you are you are the deity of worship you are the deity that i turn all my desires to <clears throat> if you just look at the ayah number 1 2 and 3 if a person has a problem in his job he goes to the owner or the boss of the company right if the problem is not solved he goes to the higher authority the government of the of the state right if he has a problem where does he go to and then he turns his face to allah allah in this verse in these three ayats says i'm your boss i'm your rab i'm your owner i'm your malik and i'm your ilah i'm your i'm everything that you you need to turn to right there's no one else that you need to turn to and this is what allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is trying to convey here that no matter what kind of help be it big or small you need to turn to me and that's the only solution that we have and now we come to the main ayah of the of the surah and this entire surah lies upon this ayat and in fact like i mentioned to you ayah number 4 is the root of all evil the root of all evil has the ayah number 4 min sharril waswas al khannas let's quickly get into the word meaning before we get into the tafsir of this ayat min means from min means from shar is something evil and the opposite of shar is khair like allah's messengers like allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions in surah zalzala surah number 99 and ayah number 7 and 8 faman ya'mal mithqala zarratin khayran yarah and you you will be called to account we will take to account even the smallest good that you have done khayran yarah the atoms weight of goodness wa man ya'mal mithqala zarratin sharra yarah and we will call to account even the smallest of evil that you have committed right so sharr is evil opposite of khair khair is good sharr the literal meaning of sharr in arabic is an evil that harms you right an evil that harms you so allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has used the word sharr allah could have used many many words that have different same meaning in the quran but he specifically he used he used the word sharr showing the evil that causes harm to you and what is the what is the evil that causes harm and this is the this is the word that we really need to focus on waswasa waswasa means whisperings right and khannas is withdrawing waswasa is whisperings and khannas is withdrawing or stepping back there an, there is an ijma ijma meaning consensus of all the scholars including the sahabas that the word al here refers to specific whisperings right and that is iblis nobody has a difference of opinion on that when allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says min sharril waswas al khannas it refers to iblis the father or the head of all the shaitans the head of all the shaitans is iblis and the meaning of this verse is from the evil whispers from the evil whispers who whisp from the evil whisperer who whispers and withdraws let's understand what this meaning what this surah uh, what this ayat says allah's messenger sallallahu alaihi wasallam says in a hadith which is reported in sahih muslim and sahih bukhari that allah says allah's messenger says none of you none of you is is without a qarin meaning everybody is with a qarin and the sahaba said ya rasulullah what is a qarin right a companion who incites or who ignites evil in you and the sahaba responded ya rasulullah even you right even you have a qarin allah's messenger says yes even i have a qarin but allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has helped me to overtake this qarin and my qarin has accepted islam subhanallah and he only commands me to do good 
The Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam says, my Qareen has, accept, has accepted Islam. So brothers and sisters, the first thing that you need to do is da'wah to your own self. Why? Because you have a Qareen with you. The first and foremost you need to do is da'wah, meaning you, do, you need to do jihad and nafs. The first and foremost, the greatest jihad is your, with your own self, right? With your own self. There's no point watching yani, movies all night and then trying to say that I want to do da'wah. I want to call people to Islam. When you yourself are not yani, uh, following Islam, right? When you yourself are not studying Islam, how do you have the right to even call people to Islam, right? The first and foremost we need to do is to invite our own selves to, into Islam. And that's why Allah's Messenger, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran, O you who believe, enter Islam completely. And you don't be lingering halfway. Right? Don't be lingering halfway. So Allah's Messenger sallallahu says in this hadith that there is a qareen with everyone, even including Allah's Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And Abdullah ibn Abbas radiallahu anh narrated uh, in a hadith which is sahih, he says, the shaitan, the shaitan, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has planted the shaitan right above our hearts. And when a Muslim or when a person forgets Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala or yani gets into heedlessness or, or forgets or goes into some, some part that he re, does not remember Allah, shaitan enters and does the waswasa and withdraws. When does he withdraw? When, he, when the person remembers Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Now, this is the hadith that is narrated by Abdullah ibn Abbas radiallahu an. And now let's go back to the history of waswasa, right? From the Quran itself. And it's very, very important to know when the waswasa started. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Surah Araf, Surah number 7 and Ayah number 19. It says, anta wa zawjuka jannata wa kula minha. And remember, right? When we told Adam alayhi salam and his wife Hawa, to stay in the gardens of Jannah, to stay in the gardens of Jannah and to eat anything except one tree. Except one tree. Which is that tree? An apple tree. Right? How many of us say it's an apple tree? It's? It's an apple tree? SubhanAllah. Brother's reading the Bible too much. <laughs> Brother, nowhere, nowhere in the Quran, nowhere in the Hadith, the name or the fruit is mentioned. It only mentions a tree. The apple comes from the verses. Right? All of us go to Christian schools and all of us know that it's an apple. And this is what? The Adam's apple. Right? Allahu Akbar. Nowhere it's mentioned that's an apple. Right? If anybody says it's an apple, it is, it's the biblical verses that we have that always been influenced on us. <clears throat> However, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Shajara. Shajara means a tree. Wala takraba shajara fatakuna min al-dhalimeen. And do not come close to this tree, or else you will be one of the dhalimun. In this, uh, in the ayah number 19. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Fawaswisu, fawaswisu. The waswasa of the shaitan led Adam alayhi salam and Hawa to eat from that tree. So brothers and sisters, the waswasa doesn't, didn't start from the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu The waswasa didn't start from Fir'aun. The waswasa didn't start from Musa. The waswasa didn't start from Isa. Neither from Ibrahim. The waswasa started when Adam alayhi salam was in Jannah. Even before he was thrown into to, to this earth, the waswasa of the shaitan started. Subhanallah. That's something really important for us to know. The waswasa of the shaitan even started when Adam alayhi salam was in Jannah. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, then he said, get down, right? Get down, all of you. Now, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, now this is something really interesting and I really want you, I want you to pay attention to this verses, the next following verse that I say. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran, the shaitan is waiting for you and for me somewhere. All of us might think he's, he's waiting for us in the discos and the pubs. Right? Brother, shaitan is not there. You know why you and I are there? Bigger shaitans. Right? If shaitan has taken you to the disc, khalas, his job is over. That girl will make you dance. Don't worry. Right? If shaitan has made you drink a, a bottle of wine, he doesn't have to force you to, another, to drink another glass or a bottle. He's done his job. 
You know what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says where shaitan is? And that's, the, and that's the most dangerous part by Allah. That is the most dangerous part that he is on. What do we pray 17 times a day? We pray, Ihdina sirat al mustaqim. Guide me to the straight path. And if I tell you, imagine you, you are guided on that path. You and I are guided on that path. Allah says, don't be overconfident. Shaitan is on that path. Allahu Akbar. Allah says in the surah, surah Araf, Surah number seven and I, uh, Surah number seven and Ayah number fifteen. It's a conversation between Allah Subhanahu wa Taala and Iblis. And again, Allah Subhanahu wa Taala is so merciful. You might you might say, Ya Allah, why why couldn't you just throw him in the hellfire, right? You know why? Because Allah Subhanahu wa Taala, when He says, Get down, get down, Iblis answers. Iblis asks something from Allah Subhanahu wa Taala. He says, Ya Allah, Qala. He says, Qala, Aindirni, O Allah. Give me respite. Leave me until the day of judgment. Subhanallah. Leave me until the day of judgment. Even shaitan believes in the day of judgment in this ayat. He says, leave me until the day of judgment. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala responds, khalas. I left you. Do what you want. And you know what shaitan tells Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the next ayat, in ayah number 8, 17? He says, because you led me astray, he's blaming, he's blaming Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, right? All of us do that, Allahu Akbar. Whenever we blame Allah, know that there is no difference between Iblis and us. When Allah takes our father away, the only thing is, Ya Allah, ki chek bab ka kul ye. <laughs> Brothers, we don't have two fathers, right? All of us have to die. Don't curse Allah and don't blame Allah. If Allah has taken your wife or father, I'm, I'm sure nobody will blame Allah if he takes his wife away, right? Nobody will blame Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, right? But our children, our, our husbands, our wives, our parents, our mother, our father, whatever. Why on that stroke, why at that moment we tend to blame Allah? One calamity, one financial downturn, we blame Allah. Two, two kinds of Muslims. One, we blame Allah. Second, our hands lift up for prayer. The whole year we don't pray. One week before results, Allahu Akbar. All five times in the masjid, first pray, first row. Right? Why results are next week? So Allah subhanahu so shaitan here tells Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that because of you, because of you, that you led me astray. See what shaitan tells. I will sit on Sirat al Mustaqim. Subhanallah. I will sit on Sirat al Mustaqim and wait. For your slaves on that path. Subhanallah. He doesn't say you're obedient, disobedient slaves. He doesn't have to wait near a pub. I'm telling you, he doesn't have to wait near a pub. He is waiting on Sirat al Mustaqim. Why? Because you and I are guided on that path. One move, one move of overconfidence that, you know what? I'm guided. Subhanallah. All my prayers are accepted. Look at Ibrahim alayhi salam and Ismail alayhi salam. The greatest of great. There's probably nobody else who can be greater in the human history except the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa Right? What did he do after the command of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? He made the Kaaba. And you know what he did? He raised his hands and said, Rabbana taqabbal minna. Oh Allah, accept this from us. We pray five times salah. How many times have we gone up to Allah and said, Oh Allah, accept my prayer today. I made a mistake, Ya Allah. I remembered something in the third rakat. Oh Allah, please forgive me. No, we do salam, boom, bang, we are out. Why? Because we need to get back to work. We need to get back to that place. Brothers, this is where we lack. This is where shaitan is always sitting on Sirat al Mustaqim. You came to the masjid, great job. You're on the Sirat al Mustaqim. In the four rakat of Buhar, 10 minutes, you concentrate only two, two minutes. Who won? You won or Shaitan won? Shaitan won. Because eight minutes, he had your mind captured with him. I'll give you a small example. You walk into a mall with a multiplex. You've just bought tickets to a PVR. And the show is at nine o'clock. You say, Subhanallah, I still have time for Isha. Allahu Akbar. You go to the masjid. Or you pray somewhere else in the parking lot or whatever. Four akats. Suddenly you go up to the masjid. And the jama'at is at nine o'clock. 
and your show is at 9 o'clock. Allahu Akbar. That is the longest salah that the Imam reads. I'm asking you a question. In your mind, are you reciting Surah Fatiha or just making a dua, Oh Allah, let this Imam finish fast. Why? Because I don't want to miss the beginning of this movie. Allahu Akbar, that's the shaitan sitting it on the Sirat al Mustaqim. Right? Just waiting for you to make a move. Just waiting for one mistake. Boom, he's there. And what does the, what does the shaitan say? Ya Allah, O oh Allah, I will come from front, from behind, from right, and from left. And I'm not going to leave your slaves. Where? On the Sirat al Mustaqim, not off the Sirat al Mustaqim. The Sirat al Mustaqim is the straight path, brothers. You say, Yasin wal Quran al Hakim, inna kala min al Mursaleen. Yasin, by the, by the Quran, but full of wisdom. Inna kala min al Mursaleen. O Messenger of Allah, O Muhammad, you are the Messenger. Ala Sirat al Mustaqim, on the path of Mustaqim. You say this, you pray this in your Salah. And you ask for the path of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa And now shaitan is on it to divert you from the remembrance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And what does the shaitan say to Allah? Ya Allah, to your slaves, your obedient slaves, I will come from front, from behind, from right, and from left. And I'll be waiting there. And then shaitan says, وَلَا تَجِدُ وَلَا تَجِدُ And you will find وَلَا تَجِدُ أَكْثَرُهُمْ شَاكِرِينَ And you will find most of them ungrateful. He didn't say disobedient. He says ungrateful. You know why? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, how, how do you start your Surah Fatiha? You say, Alhamdulillah. The word Hamd has two parts. One is shukr and one, one is thanking and one is praising. Even thanking is, when you, when you accept the favors of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, what do you do? You thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The word shakirin has two meanings in this ayat. You will find most of them not shakirin. You will find most of them ungrateful. There are two meanings. One is not being thankful and second is being disobedient. You know why? Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the following ayat, and when my slaves are not thankful, Allah says, and when my slaves are not thankful, He says to Iblis, you and all those who follow you, I will fill hell with them. Allahu Akbar. I will fill hell with them. And what does Allah say in Surah Ibrahim? Surah number 14, ayah number 7. He says, if you give, if you are thankful, if you thank Allah more, Allah will bless you even more. If you are, thank, if you are thankful to Allah, Allah will bless you more. But if you are thankless, if you are ungrateful, then severe is my punishment. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says this, severe is my punishment. What is the punishment? It's hell. Allah will not remove, snatch away your home tomorrow if you don't thank Him. Allah will not snatch, snatch away your business or your car that you drive. But Allah will wait and give you more and more and more so that you become even more arrogant and even more ungrateful. And then on the day of judgment, He will hold you to account. This is what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does to people who are thankless. And here also another meaning is disobedient. And that's why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, and those who follow Iblis, and those who follow you, O Iblis, I will feel hell. Follow meaning obedience. And those who are not obedient to Allah and His Messenger, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will feel hell. Just like the way Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Surah, Surah Nisa, Surah number, 14, uh, Surah number 4 and Ayah number 14. It says, whoever disobeys Allah and disobeys Allah's Messenger, he will be casted into the hellfire. So meaning, obedience to Allah is the key. Now, I want to show you three words of the Quran in three different places that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uses the word for evil whispering. First is waswasa, used in this surah, surah Nas. Second is the word nazagha, used uh, in different places. Um, <clears throat> And the third is Allahumma salli ala nabiyyina Muhammad wa barik wa sallam. And the third is Hamazat. Right? And I will show you in the, in the inshallah, I hope it's visible.
I don't think it's too visible for the sisters. Anyway, I'll read the verses, sisters, inshallah. The first is وَمِن شَرُّ الْوَسْوَاسِ الْخَنَّاسِ And the word I want you to focus here is waswasa. Waswasa means an evil whisper. The second is in Surah Araf, Surah number 7, Ayah number 201. And the word here, وَإِمَّا يَنْ زَغَنَّكَ نَزَغَ نَزَغَ is the root word of this. Meaning, again, an evil whisper. And the third, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Surah Mu'minun, Surah number 23 and Ayah number 97. وَقَالَ رَبِّ أَعُوذُ بِكَ مِنْ حَمَزَاتِ الشَّيْطَانِ oh, And say, O oh Allah, I seek refuge with you from the evil whisperings of the shaitan. Hamazat, the evil whispering. Nazara, evil whispering. And waswas, waswasa, evil whispering. Why did Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala choose evil whispering of waswasa in this Surah Nas? Why didn't he use Hamazat and why didn't he use Nazara in Surah Nas? It's really amazing to know the difference between all these three. And I'll give you two examples uh, for that. <clears throat> the first waswasa in Surah Nas. Waswasa means an evil, just an evil thought. That's it. Waswasa means an evil thought. That shaitan only just puts in your mind. That's it. Khalas, nothing else. However, وَإِمَّا نَزَغَ يَنْزَغَ نَزَغَ is just not an evil thought, but something that provokes you. Right? Something that provokes you to do evil. And Hamazat is something that compels you to do evil. Subhanallah. Something that forces you to do evil. I'm asking you a question. Among all these three, something that forces you to do evil, something that provokes you to do evil, or just a thought, which is the start of evil. Just the thought. Subhanallah. Allah uses just the start of the evil in this surah. He doesn't use the biggest thing, Hamazat. No, He uses the middle thing, Nazara. Right? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that's, that's why I told you, this surah has the core, has the root of all evil, the waswasa. Just the thought of it. For example, I'll give you, a, I'll give you an example that probably everyone has gone through. Allahu alam. Right? In your teenage days, what happens is when you're passing, a, you've just graduated from school, you're in college, or you're, you're in your undergraduation. You have this josh for Islam, right? You open YouTube, you type in Noman Ali Khan. Subhanallah. Great Iman. Just the thought comes in. The latest video of Katrina Kaif. That's it. That's the waswasa. You haven't opened it. That's the waswasa. Right? Khalas. You said, Ya Allah. No. Iman, Ya Sheikh. Iman. Taqwa. You type in and you press enter. The videos of Nawmani Khan comes and one video where a semi-nude girl comes up. That's your nazaha. Something that provokes you. Your mind is now bothering. Your mind is right there at that video. Even though you're listening to Nawmani Khan, your mind is there. It says, khalas. You go type in Nawman Ali and you delete Nawman Ali Khan and you put in something else now. And you just go into the flow. Shaitan has just done hamazat with you. What has he done? First, he just put an evil thought. Next, he provoked you with a small banner or a picture. And then he's controlled you totally. You've just gone into the flow. This is what happens. And some, one, one great example that I always give to brothers and sisters is how you convert your waswasa into a hamazat and not a hamazat to a waswasa. Right? Suppose you go walk into, a, walk into your college. First day or, or first week. It's for both brothers and sisters. You know the Islamic yani, rules of lowering your gaze. You put down your, your eyes, eyesight and you walk. The sister comes with a hijab and she's also not, she's also walking, looking down. She doesn't look anywhere. She's there. Imagine for these two people, right? The brother and the sister. If somebody comes up, if a, if, a, if a girl comes up to the guy and says, do you want to share a night with me? 
Nasrullah yafiyah. Na'uz billah. Where is your taqwa? He says, taqwa, I have taqwa. I fear Allah. No way. Nobody would do that. Why? Because everybody is scared of the Hamazat. Everybody is scared of the big zina. But just imagine, the same girl comes up and says, you know what, I, I missed yesterday's class. Can I have your notes? Subhanallah. Your smile comes up. Why she's asked my notes. You give your notes. After a week, you exchange numbers. No problem. It's still going on. After a week, you talk to her on phone. It's only a phone call. After a week, at a coffee shop. It's only coffee, brother. Chill out. After a week, it's a movie. After a week, it's dinner. And then after a week, it's bed. Now what happened? This is what waswasa do hamazat. Shaitan just takes control. It just started. If the same thing would have happened firstly, you say, no, no way, taqwa ya shaykh. But this gradual process of shaitan, that's what Allah says in Surah Al-Baqarah. Do not follow the footsteps of shaitan. Right? No, he's a plain enemy. Nobody will go to zina in, in the first step. But zina is a gradual process. And now in the last part, when you say, when you ask this Mr. Taqwa, what happened to your taqwa? He says, no, I don't carry it anymore. It's in my closet. Right? This is what shaitan does. This is what the power of shaitan is. And this is why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uses the word waswasa and not nazagha or hamazat here. Right? Because the waswasa is the beginning of all your evil. Some of the waswasas that turn into, turn into yani, hamazat, very, very common, is misuse of internet and mobile phones. Right? You buy your laptop, you tell your dad to buy your laptop for good reasons. Dad, I'm in my final year engineering. I need to do it for a project. What happens? Accept the project, everything else is on. Allahu Akbar. Next, three hours of movie. Subhanallah. Your eyes don't blink. Half an hour of khutbah, you're dozing off. The best sleep ever in your life is during a khutbah. I'm telling you, trust me. The best sleep of your life, brothers. Six hours in the night that you slept, won't, you will not get a sleep like the 10 minutes that you got in that khutbah of half an hour. Why? Three hours of movie, I couldn't move off my eyes from that screen. But khutbah, three times you doze off. Right? Why? Shaitan is right next to you. Now don't tell the guy next to you, sitting next to you is the shaitan. Right? Watching television. You just want to know, see the news. You switch on the TV only for news, you end up watching a movie. Missing Fajr. Snooze, snooze, snooze. You know Fajr is at 5.30. You put the alarm at 5.15, snooze and snooze and snooze, it's at 6 o'clock. And then you get up and it's like, oh man, already Ishraq, Allah's Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa has said, do not pray when the sun is rising up. So let me go back to sleep. Allahu Akbar. Third time, the hadith comes to your mind. Right? But at 5.15, you snooze, you lose. That's it. Khalas. So many things that happen in our daily life, shaitan is actually playing on us and we don't even realize. We just don't realize. And this is what I tried. I'm, this is now we come to the point that who does the shaitan have power on? Right? Who does the shaitan control? This is where I really want you to pay attention and listen to the words of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala from the Quran where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says shaitan has no power over these people but shaitan has power over these people and it is the will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Right? So we need to know who shaitan controls and who shaitan can't control. And inshallah make dua that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives you and me the ability of overcoming the shaitan coming to the first category inshallah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran in Surah Nahal, Surah number 16, ayah number 100, that he has no power, shaitan has no power over those who believe and put their trust in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So first and foremost is belief. All of us believe. Still why does the shaitan come after us? Because we don't trust Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We don't trust Allah enough. Because we let the shaitan come in. 
even if we let the sh even if we trust Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, yet why does the shaitan follow us? You know why? Because Allah's Messenger وسلم, says his job is never to give up. That's it. His job is never to give up. One time or the other you will give in and he gets in. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in verse number 121, in, in, uh, in verse number uh, uh, Surah Nahal, Surah number 16, ayah number 101, the shaitan has power only do, over those who obey him. What is, the, what is the meaning of obey him in this ayat? The scholars of tafsir have said, obey the shaitan means you follow the waswasa that is in your mind. For example, if you are watching a show at 8.15 and you know Isha is at 8.30, right? It strikes your mind that Isha is 8.30. But another thing comes up and says, let me just pray in the house today. Shaitan never incites you to miss Isha. The first thought is, Shaitan never tells you, I won't pray Isha. The only thing Shaitan tells you, let's pray in the house. You've, you've lost the battle, the first battle. When you've missed the masjid and prayed in the and you now you give in to the shaitan, you pray in the house and it becomes 10 o'clock, 10 30. Now what happens is let me miss Isha, let me get up, inshallah from Fajr. I'll never miss Ya Allah, I'll never miss a salah from Fajr. Shaitan has won, your Isha is gone. This is what the shaitan does. He just he does the first instant says, Don't miss. I'm not asking you to miss your salah. I'm only asking you to delay your salah. Why? You can't miss the cereal, right? That's the key. That's the problem. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, the one who obeys the shaitan, shaitan has power over him. And the one who commits shirk, the shaitan has power over him. We don't, we don't commit shirk. Subhanallah. Shaitan is always trying after us to commit shirk. And shaitan is never with those who commit shirk because they, they've gone to the, the level of the highest thing that you can commit. Right? So in this ayat, very, very important to know shaitan does not have power over those who obey Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and those who always remember him. And now we come to a point that is very, very dangerous. Very, very dangerous. When does shaitan give up? Does he give up or no? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran in Surah, Isra, uh, Surah Araf, Surah number 7 and Ayah number 17, the shaitan tells, Surely I will sit and wait for them on the Sirat al Mustaqim. And Allah's Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says in a hadith reported by Imam Muslim that <clears throat> shaitan comes to you at all circumstances and all your affairs of life until the last moment of death. Allahu Akbar. Brothers and sisters, keeping all jokes apart. This is something that you really need to focus on and pay attention to. Shaitan coming to you at the last moment of death. Allah's Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa has always seeked refuge. He says, Allahumma inni a'udhu bika. He says, min al-qabr, from the, from the grave. Allahumma inni a'udhu bika min al-mahyaya wa mamat. From the fitna from the fitna of the hayat, from the life and the fitna of death. So somebody said, Ya Rasulullah, what is the fitna of death? He responded, the fitna of death is that shaitan comes to you, the person dying in the form of his father who has already died, in the form of his mother, in the form of his son, in the form of his wife, in the form of her husband who has already passed away. And they come into, the shaitan takes their form and comes where nobody can see except the person dying. And he comes and says, O oh, so and so, O oh, Ya Abdul Rahman, O oh, so and so, I have seen the true religion and Islam is not the true religion. Do not say the kalima. Say that Isa is the son of Allah. And this is the time that the shaitan will take you away. And if you believe, if you take words, those words of the shaitan, even at that moment, by Allah, by Allah, it's doomed. It is the hadith that narrated from, uh, from a sahih hadith that Allah's Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa said that a person will continue to do good until his last moment that he will give in to the shaitan. And when he gives in, he will die in that state. And a person will continue to do evil until in the last moment he obeys Allah and he dies in that state. Subhanallah.
right? And <clears throat> one thing that Abdullah ibn Abbas radiallahu anh, narrates that shaitan is always waiting for an opportunity for you and for me to forget Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Like Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions in the Quran, in Surah Hashar, Surah number 59 and Ayah number 19. And do not be like those who forgot Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala made them forget themselves. And verily they are the fasiqun. And in Surah Mujadilah, Surah number 58, Ayah number 19. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Shaitan has overcome them, overpowered them, because he made them forget the remembrance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Shaitan has overpowered them because he has made them forget the remembrance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And one thing with the word forget, it is so beautiful to know that I told you in the beginning of my talk, the word nas not just mankind, but in Arabic, the word nas also comes from the root word nasiya. Nasiya means forget. And insan comes from the word nasiya. Always in a state of forgetfulness. Subhanallah. Right? And that's why Allah's Messenger sallallahu says, the one who forgets and the waswasa comes in should remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And what should he do? He should say, A'udhu billahi min shaytan rajim This is the command from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And... And that's what Allah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned in this verse, in this ayat, وَمِن شَرِّ الْوَسْوَاسِ And when the whisperer whispers, and when you remember, khannas, he withdraws. When you remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the shaitan withdraws. But when you forget, he attacks you again. And this is the form of attack and defense from shaitan. Attack is the waswasa, defense is the khannas. Shaitan moves back when you remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And that's why Allah's Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, when you pray a hundred times, La ilaha illallahu wahdahu la sharika lahu, la ulmulku wa lahu alhamd, wa huwa ala kulli shayin qadeer. In a day, a hundred times in a day, Shaitan will never be able to put his waswasa in you. Subhanallah. Why? Because a hundred times almost takes the whole day. You're always constantly praying. 10 times in the morning, 10 times in the, at 10 o'clock, 10 times at 11 o'clock, 10 times at 12 o'clock. You're always remembering this dua. And the shaitan will never overcome you, no, never overpower you. And in Arabic grammar, it's, it's very important to know that verbs are weak and temporary and nouns are, are strong and permanent. And the word yuwaswisu, Whenever the word ya, ta, noon, and a come before a word, there are only four words. Alif, noon, ya, and ta. And the same thing, alif here. They come, they come before a verb to make it present, present tense. The word yuwas visu is a form of a word. But you will find al in the word was wasil, khannas. And this shows al is always a noun. It's never a verb. Meaning, when the shaitan is always at you, permanently. The shaitan is always permanently at you. But his, his whisperings are at moments that you forget Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Subhanallah. Right? Even the structure of this verse, Allah has kept the grammar in, in such a way that even the grammar plays such an important role. al waswas al khannas shows that the, the, the whisperings are permanent. But yuwaswisu shows that the whisperings are when you forget Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Their time and they withdraw and the khannas is when the shaitan withdraws when you remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And there are three words of the same structure. The first one is waswasah. You add a, you, you add a ha to the waswasah. It's the, sl it's the weakest form of waswasah. The second is wiswas. It's the middle form of the waswasah. And the third is waswas, is the strongest form of waswasa. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uses the strongest form in this verse, in this ayat. Waswasa is the strongest form of, of whisperings of the shaitan. <clears throat> now, what do we do when we have this evil whisperings of the shaitan? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala commands us, it is wajib, it is compulsory that we do what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has commanded us. And Allah's Messenger says to remember Allah. 
And the verse that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uses in the Quran in many many places is seek refuge in Allah. A'udhu billah. A'udhu billah. Should brothers and sisters, this, this word A'udhu billah should always be on our tongue. Should always be on our tongue. A'udhu billah. A'udhu billah. Even though it might not be loud, but make sure that it's, it's always in your mind or your tongue to say A'udhu billah. Even before you read the Quran, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala commands you, seek refuge in Allah. Why? Because it will, the shaitan will divert you from the meaning of, Allah, of the Quran. Right? And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Surah Fusilat, Surah number 41 and Ayah 36. And when an evil whisper of shaitan comes to you and turns you away from the remembrance of Allah, then A'udhu billah, seek refuge in Allah. Another verse, Surah, Surah Araf, Surah number 7, Ayah number 201, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, And when an evil whisper of shaitan comes to you, then seek refuge in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, saying, A'udhu billah. And the next verse, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, There are two different people. One is the muttaqeen, the people who have taqwa, and the one who follow the shaitan. Allah says, the one who, does, who is a muttaqeen, verily, those are the muttaqeen. When an evil thought comes to their mind, they remember Allah. So if you want to be a muttaqeen, simple, when an evil thought comes to you, you remember Allah. But, the next verse, but, those who obey the shaitan, when the evil thought comes to them, look what Allah says, they plunge deeper into the thought. Subhanallah. They go deeper, meaning, they now practice the evil thought. Shaitan just put the waswasa, and now somebody provokes them. Right? For example, you know there's a match tonight between Man U and Arsenal. But you, you're in two ways to watch that match. Somebody comes home and says, you know what, let's watch it together. Subhanallah. He's provoked you. And now you sit all night and you watch that match for two hours. And you miss Fajr. What does, Allah show, what does Shaitan do? He's totally overpowered you. And that's the level of Hamazat. Make sure, brothers, that our waswasa doesn't become hamazat. The shaitan from the waswasa will try to provoke you. Our taqwa, our iman, our level of iman that we have should overcome our shaitan. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us so much of iman and so much of taqwa that we have the ability to say no to the waswasa and to overcome the waswasa, inshaAllah. Ameen. And this is what, this is what it is. Desires, temptations, Haram activities, right? In business, you know interest is haram, yet you delve deeper into it. Somebody just tells you, how do you think you can get richer and bigger if you don't borrow money? Right? And the only way to borrow money is today, who will give you an interest-free loan? You have to go to the bank. Boom, you take the first loan and you're done. The first loan doesn't become second, the third, the fourth, and you're into that loan. And you have no way to come out. And by Allah, every single thing is pledged. Allahu Akbar. Brothers, this is what the shaitan wants to do to you. Right? It takes you from, the what, from that one waswasa to the level of its controlling you. Brothers, your evil desires, your lusts, your whatever it is, try to come out of it. Try to have the ability to say no. And Allah's Messenger وسلم, says, Ilahin nas. Ayah number three. And he says, Min sharrul waswas al khannas. There's a beautiful link between ilah and waswasa. Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran in two different places. One in Surah Al Jathiya, Surah number 45 and Ayah number 23. And second in Surah Furqan, Surah number 25 and Ayah number 43. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, is asking Allah's Messenger, Ya Rasulullah, O Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, have you seen the one who takes his lusts? who takes his desires, who takes his fahisha, who takes his, yani fahisha means the evil desires, as ilah, as his Lord, Allahu Akbar. Allah is asking a question. Have you seen the one who takes his evil desires as his own ilah? Meaning, the waswasa that, is, that came to him, he made that waswasa into hamazat, and that hamazat became his ilah, Allahu Akbar. Allah says in two different places about this verse. That's why brothers and sisters, it is so important, so important to control that waswasa. Shaitan is always after you and me. It is so important to have taqwa of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. 
Now we come to ayah number five. I only took so much of time on ayah number four because that was the, that was the, main, the main theme of the surah. Alladhi means those. Yuwaswisu, those who put the whisper. Yuwaswisu is a verb which is of past ten, present tense. Whenever you add alif, ya, noon, and ta, it becomes, a, from, from the past, it becomes a present tense. So, whenever shaitan is doing that act now, fi, in, sudur, sudur means chests. Sadr is chest, sudur is plural. Nas, the chests of mankind. <clears throat> Why does Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala use the word present tense here? Because whenever shaitan is attacking you with waswasa and you remember Allah, shaitan withdraws. Shaitan withdraws immediately. Right? Shaitan withdraws immediately. As Allah's Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa says, shaitan even comes to you at the time of eating. And if you do not say the word Bismillah or, make, or take Allah's name, shaitan calls upon his friends and says, this is a plate that we can feast upon. And as soon as you use the word Allah, shaitan flees from that place. Subhanallah. Right? This is how shaitan, even to the extent that shaitan is entering to your homes. What does Allah's Messenger say? Allahumma inni a'udhu bika min al-khubusi wal khaba'is. Even when you enter the bathrooms or toilet places, Allah's Messenger says, seek refuge from the evil of, of jinn and mankind. Subhanallah. Alladhi yuwaswisu fi sudur al-nas, who whispers in the breast or, or chest of mankind. It's narrated in the two sahihs. There are two hadith that I will narrate to you. Allah's Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was in the masjid during Ramadan, during ihtikaf. And his wife, Safiya radiallahu an, she came in and she met the Messenger of Allah and spoke to him. And since it was night, Allah's Messenger decided to leave her to, to her house. So he came along with his wife, <coughs> Safiya, and two men from the Ansar, Muslim men, saw, saw the Messenger of Allah when it was quite dark. They saw the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and they saw him with a lady and they did not recognize this lady and they ran behind the Messenger of Allah only to see what he was doing. Allahu Akbar. Brothers and sisters, they didn't even leave the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Right? The shaitan, as soon as somebody saw uh, a, a, a girl, a lady with Allah's Messenger, they ran behind to see who that lady was. And then Allah's Messenger looked behind and there were two, two, two Ansaris and Allah's Messenger said, stop, stop. Stop right there. And look what Allah's Messenger says. Beautiful. Even before they say, they said anything, He said, She is my wife, Safiya. Even before a thought, evil thought comes to you, She is my wife. SubhanAllah. This is reported in Sahih Bukhari and Sahih Muslim. And then Allah's Messenger وسلم, reported this hadith by saying, Verily, the shaitan runs through in the son of Adam like the flowing of the blood. SubhanAllah. Shaitan is in our veins, shaitan is in our body, as if to say the blood flows in our, in our body, like the, like the blood flows in our body. And then it's also narrated by Ibn Abbas radiallahu an, that shaitan blows into the son of Adam, and when he blows into it, he becomes happy. And when he remembers Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he withdraws. And this is reported again in a sahih hadith. And listen to this beautiful ayat of the Quran, brothers and sisters. Of Surah Hujrat, Surah number 49 and Ayah number 7. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in this ayat, Allah does something for you and for me. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, I, that Allah has beautified Iman. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has, has said, Allah has, has made beloved, Allah has made us love Iman and has beautified in, in our hearts. And has made, yani, karaha, karaha means has made disgusting has made disgusting to, to us disbelief, corruption, and disobedience. Subhanallah, it is Allah who makes us love our Iman. And look what the Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells in Surah Anfal, Surah number 8 and Ayah number 48. Shaitan has beautified our evil deeds for us. Subhanallah, Shaitan has beautified our evil deeds. In one verse, Allah says that I have made Disgusting for you, disobedience. Another thing, shaitan has made you, yani your, your evil deeds may look, look pleasing to you. 
Shaitan has made pleasing to you your evil deeds. Meaning, today if you look, brothers and sisters, if you look back into the, in the lives of the Sahaba, or the companions of the Prophet ﷺ, or the righteous scholars, for them, a small sin looked like a mountain. Today, a mountain of sins looks like a mole to us. Right? For example, if we do a big sin, the first thing is, Kya barak, bada kar liya? He only did so much, right? You tend to praise that sin. Allahu Akbar. Right? This is the difference between them and us. Shaitan has made our evil look so good to us that we think that they are only small sins. While actually they are just piling up and becoming bigger and bigger. And now we come to the last ayat. Min sharul min al jinnati wan nas. Min is again from. Jinnati is jinns. Wow is and. And nas is mankind. So the meaning of this verse. Min al jinnati wan nas. Is from jinns and mankind. In this verse, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala places the word jinns before mankind. And there's a reason for it. There are two reasons. One is the main personality behind the waswasa is not human beings, is the jinns. Right? Human beings are not, yani, they are not the, the foundation of waswasa. It is the jinns that are foundation of the waswasa. The second is the job of the shaitan is to do waswasa. The job of the humans is not to do waswasa. Right? The job, the primary job of the shaitan is the evil jinn is to do waswasa. And that's why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions waswasa front before nas. Be, uh, the jinns before nas, before mankind. In this verse, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, waswasa comes from the jinns and waswasa comes from the mankind. Now we know how the waswasa comes from the shaitan. But how, it, how does the waswasa come from, from human beings? Right? I'll give you two examples. The first is waswasa that coming, comes from the, from the mankind. Is when a person has decided to do something good. Right? When a person has decided to do something good. For example, if a person has decided to leave a beard in Islam. Subhanallah. He goes up and says, Inshallah, I want to leave a beard. If he's married, the first question is by his wife is why now? Let's wait for some more time. You look so handsome, right? You look so smart. If he's not married, his parents. You're growing up, you have to get married. Who will give, my, who will give his daughter to you with a beard? Allahu Akbar. These are the, these are the waswasa of, the, of, of human beings, right? A second example that I would love to give is when a person has quit smoking. As a person has quit smoking, he comes in a group of his friends. And everybody on his friends know that he's quit smoking. The guy, with the, the guy who is still smoking removes the pack right below his face. He shows the triple five packet or the lights or the kings or whatever. And the cigarette is just out. And says, man, how do I come out of that? He says, okay, only one. Today only, khalas. From tomorrow, inshallah, I'll quit again. So he takes that smoke and he smokes. Was it the shaitan or was it the humans of the shaitan? It was the humans. And that's what Allah says. Min al jinnati wan nas. The waswasa comes from the jinns first and then from the humans. And brothers and sisters, it is so important for us to know those humans that put waswasa in us to divert us from the remembrance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and to take heed and to understand that we cannot fall in the trap of shaitan, neither the trap of humans. And I would like to conclude this tafsir before I can come to the analysis of Surah Nas and Surah Fatiha with a hadith of the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam who said a very beautiful hadith and by Allah it summarizes the heart of a man. I'm telling you, it summarizes the heart of a human being. <laughs> this person came to Allah's Messenger and said, Ya Rasulullah, says, sometimes I say things to myself that had, had, it, had it to be louder or to people, I would have chosen to fall off from the sky rather than to be it loud. Meaning, these words, these thoughts that come into me, I'd rather fall off from the sky, rather I should tell it loudly. 
And then Allah's Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa said, Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar, Alhamdulillah. He says, Allah is great, Allah is great. Praises to be Allah, to, to belong to Allah. For verily, Allah has kept the waswasa as only a whisper. Subhanallah. Brothers and sisters, just imagine the hasad, the evil, the hatred that we have for one another comes out. Allahu Akbar. How many relations we are going to break? How many friends we are going to break? Right? This is what Allah's Messenger says, that this is a blessing, that the waspasa is only a whisper. With that, inshallah, I conclude with the last heading, and that is the similarities between Surah Nas and Surah Fatiha. This is something really beautiful, and I would like to, I would like to brothers and sisters to pay attention to this. The similarities between Surah, Surah Nas and Surah Fatiha. The first even before we get into the first, it was the sunnah of the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa that whenever he would finish Qul A'uzu Bin Nas, he would follow it up with Surah Fatiha, showing two things. One is the studies of the Quran can never be completed in Nas. You need to go back to Fatiha again, because every single time you read the Quran, you take one verse, you read it ten times, you will get tif, ten different thoughts. You will, ten di you will get ten different new views about this surah, about this ayat. Second, is that to form a link between Surah Nas and Surah Fatiha. What is that link? The first is we, de we said that Surah Fatiha is ista'ana. You draw the help of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And Surah Nas is ti'adha. You draw the protection of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is the link between Surah Fatiha and Surah Nas. In Fatiha, you're asking Allah's help you're drawing Allah's help on you, and Surah Nas, you're drawing Allah's protection on you. The second is Surah Fatiha starts with Rabbil Alameen, Maliki Yawmuddin, Iya Kanabud, meaning Ilah. All the three words are in Surah Fatiha. Rabbil Nas, Maliki Nas, Ilah Nas. The same three words are in Surah Nas. Rabb, Ilah and Malik. The only difference is you are getting personal in Surah Nas. Why? Because you are now asking it for your own self. The third is in Surah Nas, in Surah Fatiha, you ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, His help ends. Yani you're asking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to help you in the end of Surah Fatiha. Right? But in Surah Nas, sorry, I uh, said it in the wrong way. Surah Nas, you ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to help you in the, in the beginning, right? Qul a'udhu bi rabbil. You ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to help you from the beginning of the surah. But in Surah Fatiha, you're asking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the, towards the end of the surah. Next, in Surah Nas, it is asking help in, in a singular form, you're asking help only for yourself. Qul a'udhu, I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's help. But in Surah Fatiha, you're asking help collectively. Where? Iyaka na'budu wa iyaka nasta'een. Nasta'een. Noon says, O oh Allah, guide us. We worship you, guide us to this part of Sirat al Mustaqim. The next beautiful thing about Surah Fatiha and Surah Nas is both of them, both of them have split into two equal halves. One for Allah, second for the slave. Surah Fatiha says, Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen, Ar Rahman Ar Rahim Maliki Yawmuddin. Allah says, I have, split, my, I have split, split the surah into two, one for myself and one for my slave. The slave says, Iyaka na'budu wa iyaka the, the, the slave has told me that I am his ilah. Ask what he wants. The same thing in Surah Nas. Out of six ayats, three are for Allah. Rabbin Nas, Malikin Nas, Ilahin Nas. And then the other three says, Oh Allah, now I need your protection. The three other three are for the slaves of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The next and the last is Surah Fatiha talks about a path of the straight path. Sirat al-Mustaqim. But the tafsir of Surah Nas tells, even on that path, shaitan is waiting for you. Subhanallah. So when you ask for Ihdina Sirat al-Mustaqim, 
also, also ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, O oh Allah, do not deviate. Rabbana la tuzik qulubana ba'da iz hadaytana wa hab lana min ladanka rahma innaka antal wahhab oh allah after you have guided me do not deviate my heart after you have guided me subhanallah do not deviate my heart after you have given the guidance to me subhanallah with that brothers and sisters i would like to end this uh, tafsir with some points to take back home the first is remember whenever you get a waswasa the command from allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is to seek Allah's refuge. A'udhu Billahi Minash Shaitan Rajeem. The second is to know the root of all evil is that one waswasa that strikes in your mind. If you can overpower that, you can overpower anything that in your life. Subhanallah. The third, we need to have the ability to recognize those waswasas. That's very, very important. We need to have the ability to recognize those waswasas. Fourth, we need to believe in Allah, obey Allah and put our trust in Allah. For verily, shaitan cannot overpower, shaitan cannot overcome those who believe, obey and trust Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And lastly, brothers and sisters, this surah all comes back to the point that no matter what, no matter what, Allah is the only one that you need to fall back for any help. Subhanakallahumma. استغفرك واعتوب إليك أشهد أن لا إله إلا أنت سبحانك إني كنت من الظالمين. قل الحمد لله وسلام على عباده الذين اصطفى.